you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about a few sponsors that not only help to make it possible to produce this show five days a week, but that I'm also genuinely passionate about promoting especially since they're helping to fund all the cool projects we have in the works, such as the Positive Head app, the docuseries that I'm intending to begin shooting within the next year, and whatever else we dream up over here at Positive Headquarters to help spread consciousness across the planet. Now, if you're short on time or just super excited for today's topic and want to dive right in and skip these ads, as well as me reading reviews or addressing any other business, Feel free to fast forward about seven minutes ahead to get right into today's show. That being said, I strongly encourage you to listen because the reason I'm passionate about my sponsors is because they've made a huge impact in my own life, which is why I've aligned with these organizations. And I firmly believe they can do the same for you, too. The first longtime stellar supporter of this show that I want to mention is Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online with over 8,000 video titles. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. The second sponsor I'm extremely passionate about promoting is Purium. The reason I've aligned Positive Head with Purium is because I wholeheartedly stand behind their mission to end human suffering by making superfoods easily available to everyone with the ultimate goal to help restore mankind's harmony with nature in the process. I mean, what a noble mission, right? It's no mystery that you need to bring your mind, body, and spirit into balance if a person truly intends to manifest the greatest and grandest version of themselves. And for me, for years... I honestly felt like I was ahead of the curve in the mind and spirit category, but I was only average at best in the level of care I administered to my body. Sure, I was healthy-ish when it came to the food I put into my system, but after doing a Purium 40-day transformation with a 10-day metabolic reset and cleanse, I can honestly say I have reestablished my relationship with food in a very positive way. Not only did I drop the extra weight that I was carrying as a natural byproduct of the transformation so that I'm now at my ideal body weight, but I continue to feel like my best self by starting every day with an organic Purium Power Shake that is made from raw superfood ingredients that were meticulously harvested, thoughtfully combined to optimize the nutritional impact it has on my body. I view the shake as plant medicine, really, and it happens to taste really delicious and I can make it in about 30 seconds. There's actually four core Purium products that I take every day, and honestly, I intend to do so for the rest of my life for a very scientifically sound reason. And if you want to learn more about those reasons, you can go check out my video at positivehead.com forward slash transformation, where I go into more detail. If you end up buying any of the Purium products, be sure and use the code POSITIVEHEAD, all one word, for a 25% discount. Secondarily, the other great thing about Purium is that it is also a new school, highly ethical network marketing company. Now, 
I'm no Richard Branson or Warren Buffett when it comes to business, but I am proud to say a company I founded with zero startup capital back in 2010 was recognized as an Inc. fastest growing private company in the U.S. five years later in 2015. So I do think it's safe to say I probably know a bit more than the average person when it comes to business. And like Richard Branson and Warren Buffett, I believe network marketing is a brilliant model when it's implemented ethically with high vibe products like Perium. Few people realize that over 80% of women that make six figures a year in the U.S. do so through network marketing. So why am I going into all this? Well, (laughs) to let you know, if you end up loving the Perium products as much as I do and also happen to be looking to create a passive income stream, You can also sign up to become a Perium brand partner. And if you want to learn more about that, go check out my video and several others that go into greater detail about network marketing and becoming a brand partner at positivehead.com forward slash transformation. And if you ultimately sign up or get products, remember, of course, to use the code positivehead, all one word. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. It is a terrific Tuesday here in the studio as I record. So happy to be with you guys and gals, extraterrestrials, whoever's tuning in, (laughs) whoever, wherever, whatever you are, I love you, happy to be here. And today we are going to dive into a bit of a heavy topic. Uh, We're going to touch a bit on suicide and the implications of that and how it affects uh, those of us left behind. And um, before we do, though, before we, we dive into that, I would like to take a moment to read a review on iTunes. As you've heard me say many times before, if you've been listening to this show for a while, I love, love, love getting reviews from you guys uh, on iTunes because it helps us to reach new people. Uh, iTunes is the holy grail of all things podcasting and certainly helps us uh to not only reach new people, but also to fuel my fire to continue this labor of love. Uh, Also, um, CastBox is the other place that you can review. And CastBox actually actually supports the show. And uh, I'm collaborating with them now and very happy about that. And so if you have reviewed on iTunes, haven't on CastBox, maybe you reviewed on iTunes a long time ago, would love it if you would take the time to review over there. Uh, Would mean the world uh, to me. And if not, that's okay too. I still love you. But uh, let's see, this one today came in on iTunes from Cherry Blossoms, and the title is Transformative and Highly Entertaining. This podcast has opened my eyes to a wholly transformative way of looking at myself and the world through pure love and oneness. Brandon's energy is contagious and his guests' topics utterly fascinating. I've struggled with an eating disorder for many years trying to break the cycle. This podcast gives me immense hope in the power of my own mind and intuition to stop hiding from my feelings practice self-love and to blast beyond it this is my first itunes review it was absolutely warranted given how incredibly thankful i am to have found the podcast even my mom loves it (laughs) thank you brandon for opening my heart and mind to this oh thank you cherry blossoms for taking the time to uh review and uh, i am honored that it's your first review of any kind and Yeah, I mean, isn't it such a powerful thing when you realize all that disempowering activity and energy that you resonated with before was really just an illusion and you have all the power within you to overcome it. And by having the experience, you actually have the contrast to where it really means something to you now, right? And uh, it's such a beautiful story when you understand why you you needed to be disempowered so you could really appreciate being empowered. And it's uh, wonderful to hear anyone that's uh, having that transformative experience. It's a, it's a wonderful turning point and new chapter. And so uh, congratulations to you, Cherry Blossoms. And um, yeah, all right. So Let's dive right in. Today's topic. Uh, today, we're going to touch on a pretty uh, touchy um, topic, as I mentioned a moment ago, suicide. And this kind of came up for me. Uh, there's a little bit of a synchronicity about it and, um, and why, as often with the show, it sort of unfolds what should be talked about in a given time space episode. And um, I had seen a quote a few days ago that really uh, resonated that I wanted to, I'd made a note, talk about this quote in in a show about it. And um, the quote was uh, by Roger Ebert. And it said, it's not what a movie is about, or he said, it's not what a movie is about. 
It's how it is about it. And so I loved that. And I want to discuss that a little bit. Then I saw someone in the Facebook group, the Positive Heads Facebook group, for those of you who aren't aware, um, a place where you can open up about you know, private issues. It's a, it's a closed group for that reason and connect with other listeners. It's an amazing uh, soul fam of P heads, as I affectionately refer to everyone there as uh, connecting, sharing, asking questions. And Kimmy wrote uh, on the in the Facebook group yesterday, any suggestions for positive head episodes for a friend who just lost her brother to a suicide and is feeling like it is her fault? And I thought, hmm, have I discussed this? And I looked and, you know, by searching keywords, I didn't see anything that suggested it in the description. So it felt like today uh, I thought about that quote that I was going to talk about. And then I thought about having heard uh, a long time ago, and I believe it might have been in Conversations with God, uh, the book, uh, or one of the books. It's, there's there's a series of them. I highly recommend them, by the way, um, and by Neil Donald Walsh. And uh, I think it may have been there that I originally heard this, but it talked about suicides and uh, sort of the perspective that these are people who are sitting in a movie theater and have decided, I don't want to see the rest of the movie. And they're getting up and watching out, walking out. And that's equivalent to what it is. So, you know, when you think about it from that perspective, which is sort of a lot less emotionally charged than the way we look at it from our human perspective, right? The serious loss that is, you know, irreparable and devastating to those of us that left behind, um, you know, when you take that normal energy that goes along with the idea of a suicide and you equate it to, well, oh, this is a person who's an eternal being who uh, was watching a particular movie they didn't want to watch anymore and they got up and walked out. And the same implications from the the, the grandest view, uh, no different than walking out of a movie. It doesn't really matter from the highest perspective because you are eternal it's one story of infinite stories and that perspective uh, is one that really stuck with me so when i thought hmm i'd already flagged it's not what a movie is about it's how it is about it and then this question popped up uh, tying them together it felt like this is this is the topic that wanted to to be discussed today and come through and um Obviously, for those of us left behind, it is devastating, right? Uh, certainly devastating when you're feeling like it's your fault. I can definitely relate to this closely in the, well, when in my own life, I had a suicide uh, situation maybe um, eight, nine years ago, something like that. My brother, I lived with my brother and his girlfriend at the time. And when they split up, she moved out, but she lived in the same apartment complex as us still. And um, she was... 21 years old, very young, very sweet, but very um, just kind of wounded, uh, wounded soul. And, you know, when her and my brother broke up, she was sort of like, yep, I, this life just isn't for me. And my brother, um, you know, basically from splitting, it was like the catalyst for her to take her own life. And she had lived with me, you know, months prior. And even leading up to her suicide, I'd had a talk with her uh, about her depression like a week before. And for a while, I, I, you know, I felt guilty. My brother felt very guilty. It almost destroyed him. Um, he's so sensitive. And, you know, this happened in part to him and uh, because of him. And, you know, she even tried to contact him the night she did it. And he didn't take her call and just texted her instead. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, he had a lot of guilt around it. And so, um, you know, that's a suicide story that's close to mine, uh, or that's, that, that is the closest suicide story in my own, in my own world. And I had some level of, uh, of guilt, like, wow, what, what if I had said something different or better, or I'd been more, conscious in the moment I was giving her advice and really like being there for her, not just like spouting advice to her, you know? And, um, here's the thing though, you know, that was her path. That was, this is someone who my brother was supposed to go through that experience. He was, he, he went through that. I believe wholeheartedly that is their sole contract. She had, she had my mother's birthday. Um, and, um, definitely some, some other synchronicities there with that whole thing, but, uh, I won't go into those now, but yeah, uh, I feel 
that it was meant to happen. This is part of the experience she was meant to give him. And uh, she was meant to give me and the little bit of guilt that I felt. And now I would say um, for Kimmy's friend, um, this is part of your experience to be left with these feelings so that you can find your way through them, so that you can find your way to a story that actually feels good. Because from the ultimate perspective, your brother got up and walked out of the movie. He's an eternal being that always will be, always has has been and um you know it, it, you're not going to lose him you're taking a break from him and i know for those left behind it is really really difficult right now it's really important this is your movie that's still playing and it's not what the movie is about it's how you are about it and it's very crucial at this point you could spend the next your whole life torturing yourself that this is your fault you should have done better you should have done something different but the reality is there's never been anything that's ever happened that wasn't perfect from the ultimate perspective and it's from our very limited view of what reality is it's everything this life but that's really not the case (laughs) the case is you're an eternal being that has lived eternally you didn't incarnate you didn't get created when you were born however many years ago you incarnated in the third dimension and you've done this many times before and you'll do it many times again we are literally floating in eternity right now and you know your brother has been burst back into pure positive energy which is you know the other side going back home and he wanted to he wanted to check out early for many reasons that are beyond all of us knowing all the reasons right uh there's there's certainly one of them is for you to be left with this experience now to to grow through it to overcome it the same way the review uh the reviewer talked about overcoming with perspective the challenge that she faced the, the challenge of her eating disorder. She broke the cycle. She gave, she found her power. She started uh, moving beyond it. And, and that's exactly what the opportunity is for you. Your brother loved you so much that he was willing to lose himself in darkness so that you could have this experience. Now, are you going to make it, are you going to honor that truth of the ultimate perspective that that ultimate reality that ultimate um beautiful work of art that was his life that he he gave and 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 sacrificed in a sense for you or are you going to um take that and uh, use it as a reason to beat yourself up for something as if uh there's ever been a mistake Um, And I would obviously suggest, strongly suggest that you see it from the highest perspective. This is an opportunity for you to zoom out and see from the the view of your higher self, your oversoul source, uh, whatever you want to refer to it, because this is where your brother is now. This is the perspective he's looking, the lens he's looking through now. He's there. He understands perfectly well why it was meant to go down the way it did, and he wants to nothing more than for you to be able to see that same perspective and to pass the test to graduate from this self-deprecating it's my fault uh there's something that happened here that wasn't supposed to and that's the 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 reality and hard for a lot of people to realize there's nothing that's ever happened that's been a mistake in all of eternity source god whatever you want to call it it's perfect and and it, it, of course, it's painful from our, our very human zoomed in view. We don't, all we remember is this life. We have amnesia to the rest of it. So it seems like all is lost, right? But it's not. Your brother exists. This has been proven. This is read the book, The Afterlife Experiments. There's an ending amounts of proof and evidence that we're, we go on and we continue on. And uh, there's actually a, a great website that i saw a while back and i think they have a radio show a book um it's called channeling eric.com e-r-i-k uh the the doctor mother her son committed suicide and then started connecting with him through a medium and then they wrote a book together my son in the afterlife and it's all his experience and perspective from the other side and why he committed suicide why that was a part of the soul contract why that was part of the path and it um it really uh transformed the mother obviously obviously, um, you know, who, who was left behind. And now all this positive energy is coming into the world through their co-creation beyond, um, you know, his physical existence. What a beautiful 
idea that we still have relationships with these souls. They're still, he's with you right now. He's with me as I'm talking about it, right? This is, this is uh, they're, they're a, a room away. Reminds me of the poem comes, comes to mind uh, by Mary Fry. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Uh, so beautiful. It's what we all are we are everything we become everything we've created this whole existence and we'll continue to create it we'll continue to create and exist and go on and that's such a beautiful thing to realize you never lose anyone you only take breaks from each other we only take breaks from each other and that makes it mean something when we come back together and this is a wonderful opportunity for Kimmy's friend to uh, really grow here. It's a wonderful setup. And uh, I know that you can. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be tuning into this broadcast. You wouldn't, we wouldn't, this would not be happening. Um, and with that being said, what I'd like to do is actually move on to a couple clips here, uh, both relatively short. Uh, one from Abraham Hicks that I found on the wise words about suicide. It's called wise words about suicide. I found it in the, in the vortex YouTube page. And then from that, we're going to jump straight into why you shouldn't mourn the death of a loved one by Neil Donald Walsh. And I found this on the mind Valley YouTube page. Let's take a listen. I had all these kind of silly questions that I know the answer to. But today I just had this, like, just this really great question. I want, and I didn't think it was possible, to be able to have a great fun, like that other girl, the Australian girl, with my sister who passed. And I would never have thought that that would even be possible because a stumbling block for me is that she went into pure positive energy via suicide. And everyone does. Some are just more direct about it. In other words, every death is suicide because nothing happens to anybody that isn't because of the vibration that they are offering and nobody's offering any vibration for you but you. So it's all self-inflicted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could you just give me something that would help me to get up there to where she is? Because I know that she's okay, and I know that she's happy, and I know that she's peaceful. She's not peaceful. She's more energetic and active than you've ever known her to be. <laughs> she was really energetic. Someone used to say to Esther, Don't worry, honey, you can rest in heaven. Uh -huh. And Esther thought, I don't think so. <laughs> Abraham wakes me up in the middle of the night on a really regular basis and wants to write a damn book through me. <laughs> so it's really about acknowledging that she's in this place of pure positive energy. And we're playing with you about the peaceful because often you use the word peaceful meaning no tension or no resistance and that certainly is true. Yeah. But there's an eagerness. There's an eagerness. There's a clarity. What we said earlier was the perfect basis for this discussion that we're having with you now because your perspective or your perception of her is really the key factor. And so you have a little adjusting to do. You did quite a bit of it just now, just sitting there in the conversation that we were having. It was a new awareness that came to you. And this is more than ever an opportunity to understand what we meant just now when we said the past has to give way to the present. So how you knew her and how you thought of her will prevent you from rendezvousing with her now. 
Unless you were remembering really early. Yeah, I can't go back that far. And if you can't go back that far, then you've got to make new memories with her. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do. And I didn't think that was possible until today, until this morning. It wouldn't have been a question that I would have even thought was possible until I heard that girl who had someone had passed. And I thought, wow, imagine like having, thinking like that about her. That would be just so cool to get to the place where she is so we can talk. Sometimes people think, because you're surrounded by so many who are still here with you, why are you looking into the non-physical pile for friendship when there are so many around that you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch? But the advantage of that is that your dearly departed are always on their high-flying disc. It's always this place of pure positive energy. And especially when they are someone that you know, someone that is your sister or someone that is part of your very powerful stream of consciousness, they are eagerly and actively aware of you and what you are about. Interest is probably the best word. Interested. Happily interested. Happily interested in what you are about. So... As you sense them, and this happens to you, you say you were unaware of this, but you've had the experience often where you are in close enough alignment, no resistance within you, that you begin to feel glimpses of her and awarenesses of her. But you usually go immediately to the tragedy of her departing, and then you shift your vibration, and it keeps you from being in the receptive mode. And now you won't do that. So now the thought can play itself out. If you are interested in having some conversations or some awarenesses, these things are really good early and easy first steps into that. When a song comes into your mind for no apparent reason, listen to the intent of the song. Listen to not necessarily what the literal lyrics are, but what that song meant to you. Because you're the translator of a vibration. And sometimes the easiest way to translate the vibration is through a song that was familiar to you. Yeah. You see what we're getting at? Yeah. And so if a song just comes to mind, stop and contemplate what it is. And often you will be able to make the association between these words that are streaming through your mind and what someone wishes you to hear. Okay. Another thing is that you can translate this vibration auditorially or visually. So very often, your dearly departed are hanging around and you'll catch them in your peripheral vision. But when you look to see, you don't see them because your eyes, when they're focused, are focused differently. So just be aware of that sort of sensing because they are all around. Also, you can feel energy on your skin. When there is a really strong compatibility, sometimes those goosebumps will come over you. And that's an indication that you are translating that vibration into something that is tangible. You even couldn't find, Esther found herself while she was driving, a fidgety thumb, which she knows is Jerry's fidgety thumb. Jerry always had a fidgety thumb when he drove. He wore the paint right off the steering wheel of every vehicle that Esther allowed him to drive. Because he had a sort of fidgety thumb. And so Esther will be driving along and she'll feel her thumb fidgeting. And she knows there's something that Jerry is wanting to say to her. And so she'll just relax and say, hey. And then she usually hears a very clear thought about something. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Things like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Enough? Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> really good. Death is a fiction. It doesn't exist. It can't occur in the experience of who you are, which is a sacred being known as your soul that lives past the end of what you call your physical life. When you're fully awake, you will find yourself never again 
mourning the death of another. Not even for a moment. You might mourn your loss, but not their death. In fact, you'll actually celebrate. Celebrate their death by celebrating both the moments of love and joy that they shared with you and the fact that they're now continuing to live in the free and wondrous expression of their evolutionary process. You would likewise neither fear nor mourn your own death and for precisely the same reason. How's that possible? How can we not mourn the death of another? Because you wouldn't be sad for something that's not true, that's not even happening. When was the last time you were really sad for a long period of time about something that didn't happen? I'm really sad that I fell down the stairs. But you never fell down the stairs. I know, but I'm sad anyway. You wouldn't do that. So why would you be sad? Because somebody has celebrated their continuation day. You see, the whole point of this particular lesson is to embrace the notion that death does not exist. Now, this is not a new age philosophy. This is not some kind of a new thought principle. Do you realize that every major religion on the face of the earth teaches us that death does not exist? Most of the major religions are built around the idea that the soul lives past the end of the body and the mind. Once you understand that, you don't find yourself in mourning over the death of another. But really, you celebrate that they have celebrated their own continuation day. It's not a small thing because it can change and alter your entire experience of a loved one departing their physical expression. I know some people who have mourned the death of a loved one for a long time. I don't mean a week or two or even a month or two or even a year or two, but in some cases for a very long time. And it's sad. You know what's sad about that? What's sad about that is that the last person who would want them to stay in such mourning would be the person who's actually left their physical experience. That's the last thing they would want. I promise you. So, you will know you're fully awake when you fail to mourn the death of a loved one and fail to even mourn your own death. I remember my mom. She was a great example of this. My mother wasn't born into what we would call the New Thought community, you know, the New Age community. She was way before that. That was after her time. But she sure did understand what I'm telling you. And I recall in her life as she moved through the final months of her life, and, and everyone knew, everyone knew it was the final months of her life. I would come into her hospital room and I'd say, Mom, gosh, I just feel so sorry. She said, Sweetheart, don't. Don't feel sorry. She said to me words I'll never forget. <laughs> Dance on my grave. And I promised her I would. And when she passed, I was sad, of course, for my own loss, of course. But I wasn't sad for her anymore because she was a living minister. She ministered to me. She ministered to my mourning before I could even have a chance to fall into it. And you know, I did what she asked. I really did. I went to the cemetery where she was buried very, very late one evening, found her gravesite, looked at the gravestone, gave it a little kiss, 
looked around to make sure no one was watching and did a little little two-step a little dance on her grave I said this dance is for you when you're fully awake you dance through the moments that you once mourned and you mourn no more Wow, that is such a powerful, powerful realization that uh, Abraham starts off with right there. It's all self-inflicted, every death. Your, your perspective of your brother at this point, of anyone that's passed, is key. That's creating the relationship. And if you're caught up on all the pain and the, that just moment in eternity where there was a lot of pain and obviously um, a, a release was sought in the form of suicide, if that's the only fragment of this eternal, grand, grandiose, magical soul, if that's the only piece of it you focus on, you only listen to that story, that song, you're preventing your, your opportunity to rendezvous now, to make new memories going forward. What a beautiful thought. You can make new memories with these, these beings that, are, that have left the, this particular reality. And as she talked about, if you, if you actually go down that path of connecting and believing and feeling, and she gives some great ways to do that, your, your dear, dearly departed are always on their high-flying desk. So you're connecting with them in this heightened state without the uh, highs and lows of 3D reality, right? So it's, there's, a, there's a bonus there as far as that goes, um, getting them at their best in a sense. What a beautiful thing, right? And then, of course, wow, the, the Neil Donald Walsh clip, how powerful was that? I definitely brought tears to my eyes. Um, you know, he starts off, death is a fiction. When you're fully awake, you might mourn your loss, but not their death. You'll celebrate their death. You know, I love, um, I love how he puts it. Why would you be sad because someone has celebrated their continuation day? Do you understand how much power you come back into when you reemerge from physical into non-physical it's like you get all of the perspective back that you lost when you came here you know and he goes on to give the example but when was the last time you were sad for a long time about something that didn't happen right your brother got up and walked out of the movie guess what there's infinite movies guess what you'll never lose him he's a part of you guess what you'll rendezvous again you can choose to beat yourself up and and feel pain and and act as if there was a mistake but that would be selling yourself way way short of what's actually going on it would be untrue um you know wow how 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 beautiful to celebrate the death uh as neil did uh dancing on his mother's grave you know, and this dance is for you. That's a way to connect. That's a way to take this and transform it. That is beautiful. That brought such tears to my eyes. It's so powerful. It's not what a movie is about. It's how it is about it. How are you going to be about the, how your movie is playing out? How are you going to be? What are you going to, what do you, what story are you going to tell? Where are you going to take this? Let's not focus on pain and just retune into that same vibration over and over again uh, and dishonor their life. Let's celebrate it. Let's dance for them because you're still here. That's how you be about your movie in a way that when you do cross, you'll look and say, I did it right. I got it right. I passed the test. I grew during those tough spots. Those toughest spots were where those biggest lumps of coal had the biggest diamonds hidden behind them. And I'm crossed back over and I can now see I did it. I, I made it through that. And as a result, I'm more. And I don't need to repeat that lesson as well. So isn't that wonderful? So... Ah, that's the only thing I would say about suicides is I think whatever lesson they were running from, they repeat. Well, that's okay. They've got eternity to figure it out. I think that's probably a pretty normal part of the, the journey for many souls. Oh, he gave up there. Okay, let's set up a similar scenario and try again, you know, and that's, that's, the, that's the, the cost to them, you know. Okay, so be it. We've probably all done it at some point. Uh, let's let's really take a, a, a heightened perspective on this thing and transmute it and dance for them. 
All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope this helps any of you out there uh, that are that are struggling with the loss of a loved one, whether suicide or otherwise. I hope this motivates you to find that song, maybe their favorite song, and dance for them and and just bring that connection that they're waiting for you to to open up by tuning in to the right vibration of who they are now, not what they were at their lowest point. <sighs> this song, what a powerful, powerful realization, right? This song uh, I have to share with you guys today uh, feels very appropriate. It's by Trevor Hall, uh, actually off his new album. It's the title track, The Fruitful Darkness. You know, one of the lyrics, he says, the dark within my dark is where I found my light. The fruit became the doorway and now it's open wide. Very appropriate for today's episode. This is Trevor, Trevor Hall, The Fruitful Darkness. I hope you enjoy. I love you all so, so much. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. Oh
了。